Hey everybody and welcome to Get On Board. This time with a new format that I came up with uh, responding to Jamie. And with Jamie I mean Jamie Stegmaier from Stonemaier Games. He is a prolific game de designer. One of my favorite game designers actually. He designed uh, one of my favorite games of all time, Scythe. And he does something uh, like, I think it's called the Sunday Sit Down, which I watch all the time. Where he talks about some topic that he uh, is interested in. I highly recommend that you check that out. Good chances that you know that before you know me or before you watch this. Um, and yesterday he, he uploaded a video where he talked about his top 10 civilization games. And with his videos it's always the case that I always want to respond. I responded a few times via comment and he's a super nice guy. He always writes back and I really like that. So I'm going to give my, my quick response to, to him. Um, and I don't have a respond to Jamie intro so let's just roll the the top 13 intro here we go so let's just start with a few honorable mentions a few games that i haven't played yet but i just bought them because I like civilization games and the idea of civilization games so much. Um, progress, evolution of technology, which only focuses on the tech tree element of uh, civilization building games, which for me is almost the most fun thing I can have in a civilization game, like building those achievements that humanity made over time. And I thought it was super clever that you can build um, some inventions and you, if you have a certain invention, you can build up on that and get better. Um, which is, I think, that I, I like the idea. I haven't heard a lot about this game, but I certainly like the idea and we'll get it to the table, hopefully sooner than later. Then one game that was on, on Jamie's list, The Golden Ages, which sounds like a really, really cool civilization game, might be a bit too Euro, because that's strange, because I, I really, really like Euros, but this game, just look at the, the board. It looks like there's a, maybe there's a mid, bit too much going on. Maybe it's a little bit too, not complex, but like, like maybe abstracted. I don't know. Since it was on James' list, I'm more inclined to try it out now. And the other game is Civilization in New Dawn. It was also on, on James' list. Um, and there are two certain things that um, make me want to play this game so much. One is the this river element that you uh, pick a certain card and when you use it sooner rather than later it's not that powerful but um, if you s let it sit longer on your board it gets more powerful uh, as time goes by which is very cool element of the game and I played the um, the predecessor of this game which we will come back to in a second um, and I guess this might be better maybe better sooner because I heard it's it's a little it's not that long than the other Civilization game, uh, like called Civilization the game. Uh, it says one and or one to two hours on the on the box, which is, I think, a big improvement. But let's come to number thirteen, and I'm surrounded by the Civilization games. Um, I hope I have counted correctly that we have thirteen here. Let's just count down and uh, see where we end up. Number thirteen is the game that I just mentioned. It's Civilization from Sid Meier's. I played this a long time ago, only twice, I think. It took me also a few hours with a friend. We played a two-player game, which might not be the wisest choice because it might be better with, with more people. I don't know. But I'm a little afraid that it might take even longer. And I wanted to like this game so much because it might be the, the, perfect, um, the, the perfect inclination of the civilization theme. Uh, there are certain w different ways to, to win in this game. You can win through uh, science and through warfare, but the rules were kind of so-so because we decided to just let it end in a, in, a, in a tie. We didn't know who won after like a few hours, which was kind of sad for us. I might have won half an hour ago, but we didn't get the rules correctly, which was really hard to do in this game. So... I wanted to like it more and I hope to, to get back to it with the other Civilization game, so maybe that will help. Uh, number 12 is a smaller game, it's called Flow of History and this 
uh, is one is very abstracted. It's only a handful of cards that you can buy. Uh, there are certain uh, achievements of human history, like uh, democracy, the castle, computers, knights. There are inventions um, that we made as humanity through the uh, through the flow of history. Um, it's on the box. It says like a sixty to ninety minute game, and I haven't played that in a long time. But I, it didn't occur to me that it was that long when I played it. But it might be, I don't know. Um, it's also very abstracted, like I said, but still it's it's the theme that draws me in into uh, these games, which is the same thing with number 11, which is innovation. And I clearly remember this game and it's not that long. It's like maybe an hour, maybe a little more. And it has like uh, those different cards from different um, eras of, of humanity. And there are certain cards that, are really really powerful some might say overpowered but there are so many inventions of, of human society that i really like and this one is definitely uh, not that abstract and definitely a civilization game because you can feel the the impact that you do with your choices so i really like that um yeah innovation it also has a has a very good uh, expansion I hear of. I haven't played with that. But um, also the base game is really cool. I like it a lot. And where are we? Number 10. And it wasn't the first game I thought of when Jamie said his caveat or his rules about what he considers an, an exploration, not an exploration, uh, a civilization game. I also dismissed one game that I put back on my list when I saw that Jamie had it on his list too. I will come back to that in a minute. Um, and this one that I thought of is Race for the Galaxy. The thing is that Race for the Galaxy for me only seems to be in one era of, of humanity. It's future and it's space, yeah. But I think through the developments that you build and the planets that you conquer in this game and you get more special abilities, for me it feels like a, a civilization game. Like uh, your, your empire, your society grows from planet to planet. Um, and I, I kind of like that. And this is a game I really, really enjoy. Also, each game is so vastly different from each other because there are so many cards. There's so much variety in the game. So I like that a lot. Then we come to a game which has definitely like this different eras. I don't know if you would consider it um, a civilization game though because it's more like a city building game because you're only building a city. But it's capitals, cities through time. And what I like about that is that you have clearly distinguished um, buildings from different passages of time. You always stay in your same city. It grows and grows and grows and it gets really big in the end. And you have certain goals and you're, you're, you have a lot of progress. There are certain tracks on the board like uh, unemployment and progress and culture uh, that you try to improve. And there are a lot of, of balls in the air that you try to juggle. But for me, it really feels like a civilization building game. Only one city of one civilization, but still. So capitals, cities through time, I like that a lot. Then one of the classics, it's a very heavy game, so I put it on the floor. It's Empires, Age of Discovery. It's a very heavy game. Um, it's is it a very early worker placement game, one of the earliest? I, I think so, I don't know. Um, and. There is a lot of abstraction going on in this game. It's also maybe only in one part of history. It's, it doesn't go from, from the Middle Ages to the future, but I feel that, let, that you make a lot of progress conquering those countries, uh, bringing stuff back, um, trading with different countries, uh, colonizing different countries. There are lots of... of certain abilities that you can build and that you can gain through conquering those those uh, countries. There's There are a lot of buildings that you can build that give you a special ability that only you can have, which I really like and which for me is a big part of those civilization games. Uh, that your tribe or your society is very distinguished from the rest of the players. So this is a thing I really like. Uh, Age of Empires. No, uh, Empires Age of Discovery. It was called Age of Empires uh, once, I think. There are different versions. It's, it's kind of confusing. Let's put that down. Ooh. Then another game. Um, also, I'm not sure this is a, a really a civilization game, but it's one of my favorite games. It's Aura et Labora. The thing with this is that there are a few 
times in the game where you get new cards added to, to the central board that players can build. And so your you build around your monastery, you try to produce more stuff, and through the passage of the game, you can produce more stuff. This might be really on the edge of being a civilization game. I kind of see that. But for me, it hits that same spot, like this evolvement of we, we produce like only small things in the beginning and then it ramps up and in the end we have like this whole production machine and we we have a lot of stuff going on at the end which is kind of something for me that i always wish that some civilization games have then one game i was a little surprised not to see on on jamie's list um, because this for me is kind of a, a civilization game uh, it's called the deus and in this game, I really like that you have a lot of cards that you can combine. And when you play one card, you also activate all the cards of that color that you have played before. So you can combine and, and make huge combos, which will allow you to build more houses and more uh, military forts on the board. So uh, this is really, for me, like one of the, the coolest civilization and, and building and exploration games. And exploration is... For me, it's a big part of every civilization game that you try to explore the world. And Jamie talked about games that have a board or a map more than... than and, and some shy away from that because they abstract that. And I like both. This has a map, which you... But it's, it's kind of an abstracted map. It's not a hex. It's like these circles that are connected to each other, which is the first game that I ever saw that did that. And where you... you move your your uh, wooden pieces around like ships and and monasteries and other other things um this is a really cool game i think a very underrated game i don't hear a lot of people except zeger seer from the dice store talk about that uh, but i really like that deals i don't know at which number we are we might be at number four i don't know i have lost track i'm sorry um another game that we haven't seen no i think we are number five I think we have to be, <laughs> um, that we haven't seen from Jamie. It's called Amerigo, also more like a, maybe a conquering exploration game. But with it, all the things that you do here, I feel like it is a civilization game where you get to the new world, build trading houses, try to conquer different territories, very much abstracted. And I'm sure a lot of you will, would disagree that this isn't, civilization building game because you are not like different enough from each other but i still get the vibe when you move around your ships and you try to get to different spots and build your trading houses but i could see this one being argued about the most from all of my choices i think but i just really like that and sometimes for me it's hard to explain when i get this civilization feeling um, but we will come back to that in a minute. Number four is a game that I really enjoy. It's Imperial Settlers. And by the way, I have to say, I did not order them by how much I enjoy those games. Because I enjoy Race for the Galaxy much more than I do Imperial Settlers. But I order them by how much I think they are, or how much I get the exploration and civilization building vibe from them. And with this game, Imperial Settlers, it's different cards that you build. And also, I, I didn't think that this would count as a necessarily as a exploration, as a, as a, I always keep saying exploration, a civilization building game, because there's so, it's really condensed down to also one village, which changes a lot. But yeah, it's still your village. So, I feel a lot better putting capitals like a city building game on the list when I saw that uh, Jamie put his Imperial Settlers on the list. This is definitely a game where you build your civilization and I, it, it has that comic look that you would find in an, like an app game where you would build your civilization. So I guess it is, but yeah, condensed down to one village. And I really like that you have so many tribes that you can play. You have uh, the Aztecs with the... Um, with the second expansion i think uh the japanese people the egyptians i think you have um and there are so many different cards one thing that i don't enjoy though is that with all the 
extra cards that got added. You have to like deck build a little bit before you start the game because otherwise it's a little out of whack when you just throw all the cards from all the expansions in, which I like to do. Um, and you can draw all the strong cards and your opponents get all the weak cards. So you most of the time you have to start the game picking cards which you would want to have in your deck beforehand which is not a, th a thing I'm a big fan of but the game is still very very fun and I'm super excited that there will be a new version I think or like a follow-up coming out this year 2019. I'm super stoked to see that. Let's come to number three which is one of my favorite games of all time but this was the game I talked a minute ago which I did not put on my list. I watched Jamie's video then I stopped loved the idea went to my shelf grabbed all the the games put them on the table and then i put this one back this is seven wonders i like that game a lot it's super heavy because all the uh, expansions are inside it and i thought no this is not a civilization building game because you're only building a small part of your civilization yeah, you have this wonder going on and you're building around that and you're building like this card that say that they are monuments and um, inventions from, from the antiquity, but not there's not really that much progression. You're not building... There are three different ages and the, the cards and the, the buildings that you build, that they get better. But I don't think... I, I love the game. And I, I'm super glad that Jamie put it on his list. Also the, the, the two-player version, which I also like, but it didn't make my list. But I don't get that civilization building feeling a lot. I don't know why. Um, that's different though with my number two and one. And I think they are interchangeably. I don't... One day I might like the, the one game better. The other day I might like the other game better. Number two is Nations. And Jamie talked a lot about that, uh, like the, the different cards that come out. And there are like uh, wars and uh, military units and buildings and wonders that you can build through the, uh, throughout the game. And what I like about Nations a lot, and it's a clear benefit that this game has, um, and th which my number one game has not, that we will see in a minute, this game has a lot of cards and you do not see every card of this in every game. So there is a lot of uh, turnaround because one game may have no military cards in it by chance and the other games have a lot, which can lead to super different games. And I like a lot that you have, if, like there's a real feeling of your society grows in a totally different way than, your, than the uh, opponent's society, which I love. Jamie was right, though. Like, when you build one invention, it doesn't make sense that the other players don't can, cannot build it anyway. It doesn't make sense, but it doesn't bother me because this way you are very, very different than your opponents, and this is one of the most fun things I can think of when I think about exploration keep saying exploration, uh, civilization building games. So uh, yeah, nations, which leads to my number one. Uh, through, uh, I just have the German title here. <laughs> it's called Through the Ages. That's what it's called. Yes. I had to look that up. I'm sorry. I forgot it for a minute. Is it the perfect civilization building game? Probably not, but it's as close to perfect as I can think of right now. By the way, I'm super, I'm super glad that Jamie does a exploration game because this game is very long. And the other problem I have with it is that you see the, you see every card in every game because there's like this river of cards. Some get thrown away after every turn, but you still see every card. So the game takes a while, but you have the chance to build everything, like from the pyramids to Albert Einstein to, uh, I don't know. Uh, Caesar to stone quarries, I don't know, like everything that almost everything that humanity has ever done, which is a cool thing. And it's it's very intricate. It's There are a lot of moving parts and it's, it's a very complicated game. But 
this is what I expect from a civilization game. Not like complicated, but a lot going on. You have to do a lot to keep your civilization afloat, to keep your civilization alive, because it's not that easy. Only a few civilizations or a few societies survived, I think, in the past time, I guess. The recurring theme with this, well, these civilization building games is, that why I like them is there are different things. I told you throughout my list what they are, but it's the scope of things that happen that really make an impact after you have played a game after you have finished the game you look on what you what you've done throughout the game and it's really like wow i achieved a lot and this is what, what to different means every of those games achieves it in a different way but i always think wow that was kind of memorable and i hope that jamie does that and i am super sure he does that with with his game it, i think they're definitely not easy to design there's a lot of things going on a lot of moving parts a lot of things that have to interact with each other though so jamie said not to to ask or not to not not to ask but he, we shouldn't be disappointed if he doesn't answer because it's still in in an early stage of production i guess but maybe just a title jamie come on or anything uh, i'm super stoked i don't know when it will come out maybe next year this year i don't know Tell us anything about it. Come on. <laughs> so, Jamie, thank you for, for giving me this, this chance to answer to you. Uh, I hope you didn't mind. And um, keep doing what you're doing because I really like to, to watch to your um, Sunday sit-down talks. Thank you for, for watching me, responding to Jamie. See you soon. Bye. Bye.